Right now it's about 6.45 in the morning and something happened last night. We had our Chihuahua, Dee Dee, she's an older dog. Yeah, she's one of these 3.30 in the morning poopers, you know what I'm talking about? Every morning at 3.30 I'm up, I have, she wakes me up. <laughs> she's just like clockwork and I have to bring her out here so she can take her little, her little business. And then I put her back in the house and she's good to go to about 5 when she's ready to have her morning breakfast. Anyway, uh, when I brought her out this morning at 3.30, there was a car parked right over that area right there. Kind of not on my property, but kind of between the property next to mine and my property. It was kind of like halfway on each side. And it was the lights were out. And I'm like, what's going on here? What's, what's somebody parked out there at 3.30? I figured the car broke down or something. So I kind of moseyed on over here while, you know, while Dee Dee was out here doing her stuff. I kind of moseyed on over here. And all of a sudden... The lights came on and uh, it squalled. The, the, the car just roared and squalled all the way down the road down here. And I'm thinking, what the heck is that all about at 3.30 in the morning? And I, and I just, so I moseyed on around here. Now we got this huge nightlight right here, lights up the whole area at night. So that's probably why they were parked way back that way. Anyway, I came around this way and uh, I didn't see anything. You know, I figured what the heck, you know, maybe it was just somebody that, so maybe out there smooching, you know, parking with the babe or parking with who knows what. And then I noticed that my garage door was partially open right here. It was up about a foot. I said, what is going on here? I said, uh-oh, uh-oh, this is not looking good. So I went on inside and I looked around and, you know, with, I turned the lights on. I didn't see anything uh, that had been done. It just, maybe I, maybe I, maybe they were trying to break in and I spooked them before they got a chance to do anything. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to do a little closer look uh, later on this morning after I locked the garage back up. I don't know how the garage door got open. I may have left it open accidentally. But uh, I'm going to make some eggs and bacon for wifey and myself. And then I'm going to go ahead and out there and go out and take a closer look. Well, I made another round in the garage. I couldn't wait much longer. I decided to just get on out here and take another second look. I don't see anything missing. And I've looked everywhere trunk everything's in the trunk that I've left laying there you know some of the junk in here they could have taken out wouldn't have bothered me at all if they in fact maybe I caught them in the act before I got a chance to to get anything I don't know nothing seems to be disturbed I can't figure this one out well guess what guess what guess what guess what there was something missing my radio that was in the car they just took it and snipped it right out. Just tore the wires out and snipped it. They just cut the wires. So, you know, it was a pretty valuable radio. That had the uh, 8-track tape player in it and everything. The original AM radio. It's valuable to a guy like me, you know, who has a Thunderbird or would like to put one in his Thunderbird, you know, with the 8-track tape player in it. It was an option uh, back in 1966. But there is one good part of this. I picked up... When, when they were screaming by, I kind of did a quick glance around and I could see that the uh, when they turned the lights on uh, and, uh, and they looked like Florida plates to me. I wasn't sure. You know, it's kind of, the states change license plates. But anyway, that's where we stand right now. We now have no radio in Perlene. Well, hello again. It's been about three days and I haven't had much luck about what happened to my radio. I'm still searching around. Uh, if I don't get an answer pretty soon or try to figure it out pretty soon, I'll have to call the police. Report a robbery of a 66 Thunderbird <laughs> radio. <laughs> They'll probably laugh me out of the place or laugh me off the telephone. Anyway, we have to keep moving on. I decided to do a little backup here. Uh, during the process of working on all these taillights and everything, I, of course, stayed in touch with Brendan. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Brendan is, he's my mentor in many ways. He lives up in Michigan. And uh, we've been in contact with each other for years. It all started out with a television one day that I bought and he contacted me. He said, you know, I know all about these things. I've done them ever since I was 16 years old. And, it, and I'll help you in any way I can. And he did. And it's been a progress, a uh, progressive relationship since then. We've become good friends. And I, re I refer to him on a lot of things. Uh, you know, I may know the answer, but I want his second opinion anyway. Uh, sometimes he'll give me an alternate idea. Uh, well, many times he gives me an alternate idea that I'll adopt. Uh, sometimes I'll say, nah, yeah, just to tick him off, you know. <laughs> 
I like doing that every once in a while. Well, anyway, I, I kept sending him videos, you know, little short videos. This is that, this is that, and this is what we're going to do. The painting, the shining of the bumper, I mean, the socket, putting the sockets in, the wiring looms, everything. I would send him every day a few videos, a, few, a video of a few segments of what occurred the day before. And I accumulated all this crap on my computer, and I just sort of left it there. And now I'm glad I did, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all those little segments, and I'm going to put them in some kind of coherent order for you. Uh, it, some of it may not exactly click right, just kind of overlook that, okay? Because some of the things I did, uh, a couple of days went by before I, you know, got a sent I just wanted to keep Brennan in the loops what it was he said I'm really glad you're doing that so I know what's going on and I wasn't going to put any of that in a YouTube video uh, and put it up but now I decided because of all the responses the great responses I got to the last video about the uh, sequential uh, mechanism assembly and uh, we still have a little bit more work to do on that assembly uh, I was contacted by uh, Nick from Vintage Thunderbird Repair. Well, he left a comment in the video as well. Uh, and he said, you know, you need to do this. So we're going to go back and do what he recommended. I think it's a good idea. But we'll get to that, not in this video, probably in the next one. So I'm going to go ahead and put together all these little dis seemingly sometimes disjointed segments of videos about all of this. And, and if you have any questions, just get with me. Uh, some of it may not be totally explanatory. Uh, Brendan and I understood it, but if you've never done it, you may not understand every little thing that you see. But don't worry about it. You know, I'm here to answer your questions. Uh, hopefully it'll just be entertaining. And it's it's for the Thunderbird owners in particular. Uh, you know, because you're going to have trouble with these lights. I, I don't care who you are. Eventually, you're going to have trouble with these lights. Uh, unless you... Uh, a lot of it's just corrosion, you know, if nothing else. Now, one thing I do want to cover before I get into that there are square rubber pieces about that big that attach to the rear of the black part of the bumper. This, this metal thing right here, I didn't film that, or if I did, it's not there anymore. I can't remember. I bought them on uh, at the bird nest. I'll show them to you in the... Uh, in the, uh, the I'll show them to you in the, in the shop manual, okay, where they're at. But you attach them to the rear. They're like little mud flaps. And they go on the back of these, uh, this big black piece here, you'll see in the videos. It screws in with three screws. And when you put that big black piece in, you put it in with these rubber things hanging down on each side, and they go down in first. Now, all of this was told to me by Nick of uh, Vintage Thunderbird Repair. I, I, I found little fragments of the rubber on the back of these things with screws. And I contacted Nick, and I said, what are these things? <laughs> because it was all dried up and hard and everything, just little pieces. The, the main section was all gone years ago. And he told me, well, those are the rubber things, you know, blah, blah. And I, I looked it up in the shop manual. Sure enough, I, there it was. I should have looked it up. But even, I, even if I had seen it, I wouldn't have known really what it was. But he told me, yeah, you fasten them on there, and then they go in first down in like this into the, into the lower section down there. And I guess it keeps water from coming up from the rear tires up into the rear of this section right here. Uh, but before I do, there's one thing I do want to show you, and then we'll launch into this, okay? It's going to be a fairly long video, but that's okay. Some of you said you don't care, and I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad that some of you don't care how long the series ultimately is going to wind up being. I'm very happy for all, for all the comments you gave. Thank you very much. You know, I, I was really getting to the point where I said, well, you know, these guys are really bored and all, but it turns out you're not. Either that or you're just a bunch of fibbers. I don't know. <laughs> But before I get started, uh, I want to say something. I want to say Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Whether you celebrate Thanksgiving or not, doesn't matter. From me to your, from our family to your family, Happy Thanksgiving. That's all that counts. Uh, we have a lot to be thankful for. You know, there's a lot of poor dead GIs, female and male, buried in our various cemeteries around the globe our military cemeteries who, who aren't here to celebrate Thanksgiving or Christmas or you know New Year's those holidays upcoming I think about them all the time you know I think about our dead veterans who 17 years old 18 years old never got to go beyond that point and celebrate what we take for granted today we should never ever 
take these holidays for granted. I don't care what anybody says, okay? It's America and our traditions. They should stay regardless of what anyone else says. I don't care what anybody else says. It, it's important. And uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of men and women who died to give us these holidays and keep them going. So anyway, let me show you the next little thing and then we'll launch into this, okay? Right now we're under the right hand side of the car below the dash where the fuse where the fuse panel is. Here's the door right here. And we come around and the fuse panel is located right there. Now on the fuse panel you'll see, of course, fuses right here. And you'll also see these things up here. Now right now there's wires connected to them with a little bit of strap here. And then over here I've got a couple of wires disconnected. What's going on here? Well these wires were connected to a set of posts just like these here, but when I tried to unscrew the nut, it broke the post. It broke it right out of there. So I got a hold of Brandon. I said, well, what are we going to do now? He said, well, show me what you got. And I did. And it turns out that, believe it or not, not only do these fuse panels have fuses, there's one missing here for the radio. I'll put that in later. It was blown, kind of messed up. Anyway, uh, he said, not only do these panels have fuses, which I knew, but he said they also have what's called self-resetting relays. Self-resetting relays, never heard of that in a fuse panel. Anyway, they're just plastic fronts with a little sort of relay inside that resets itself after it pops open with screws that come out. And uh, once, that, once the screws and everything, the guts are taken out, what you have is an empty metal can which you can see back here, if I can ever get this thing out of the way. See that metal can right there? Let me zoom in here. Well, that's what's left of that uh, self-resetting relay that I had. Now you can reach in there with a pair of pliers and screw around and pull those cans out. They just sit in these uh, empty slots, as you can see right here. Here's one here and here's one here. They just push in and then they snap in, I guess. Uh, you can see the center's kind of bent down a little bit. So, I did not know that these things had self-resetting relays in them. I had no idea. I just thought these were just connections for these straps. That's all. Well, I was wrong again, as you can see. See that little metal part right there? This is another relay. This is another relay. And uh, so I had to do something. And uh, I went out on eBay. And let me show you what we, what we now have. This is uh, the self-resetting relay that I bought. Now it does not, it's larger than the one that's on the fuse panel. And it's uh, got a couple of deal, I could, you know, I could screw this to the body underneath the car if I wanted. But I'm not going to do that. All I'm going to do is I'm going to tape around it. And uh, I insulate, you know, the entire back part so it doesn't touch anything that's metal. The copper side is the uh, battery, which is the thicker wire. And the other side is just the outgoing wire to the, I think it goes to the headlights, or to the, uh, this part feeds the headlights, I think, through the uh, a light switch. But anyway, you know, now why did I go with one like this? So, now, I could have gotten one that was uh, the right size uh, on eBay. There were people who were selling them, but man, they looked older than the ones I've got, you know. They were supposed to be new. Well, you know that they're going to be almost 60 years old. I didn't want something that was 60 years old. I wanted something that's going to be more reliable, especially feeding the headlights. Anyway, uh, I went ahead and bought this one instead. I'm going to tape it up, fasten those two wires, and just sort of push this thing up out of the way where it doesn't touch anything, and we'll be good to go. Now, later on, I may change my mind. I can easily remove it. It comes with the, it comes with the nuts and the, and the star washers. So all I got to do is slip those babies over there, tighten these up. I'm back in business, and we can move on to something else. So now... Let's begin the show of all the old videos that uh, I've been collecting, uh, that I have been sending. Brendan, remember now, sometimes they may not be exactly connected perfectly. Just kind of overlook that. As long as you're learning something, you may want to know that's what counts. Thought you'd like to see what it looks like before I finish tearing it completely out. Well, I'll tell you what, she's a mess. <laughs> I'm going to have to get some high temp silver paint. To put back in there that i don't know if that was paint or some kind of a chromed plastic it's, it's plastic but i think it's plastic 
Might be metal, you never know. Well, I'll tell you what, it's these sockets and everything, whew, boy, we got some problems on our hand, but this whole thing comes out in one piece. And this is kind of neat, these three lights here, this one here was broken, it was over here. <laughs> Somebody put it over there and it belongs over here. But the tabs are broken off that screw into these uh, little things right here. Oh well, you know, every time you look at something, it's something new. <laughs> well, let me yank it out and see what the back of it looks like. The bulbs all came out fairly easy. I only had one broken one, this one right here. And uh, I haven't tried to get the rest out, but this one here is broken too. And I don't know, the rest will come out with a little bit of, a little bit of that there uh, PB blaster. That's what I use to get the rest out. Well, here's the back of this mess. You can see where they're bolted together. I'm gonna to have to soak to bolt it here and here. Then they'll separate into three places. The problem I'm having right now is how do I get these? They look like they would just, you know, put a screwdriver under there and pop them out like, you know, the old types, but I don't think that's right. I'm gonna to have to figure this one out. It, it might work for this one and this one, but I don't think it'll work that way for this one. It's gonna take a few minutes. I'll read up on it. I just never bothered to read up on it because, you know, I wasn't ready. And here's what the inside looks like. I've got everything soaking in that PB uh, blaster right now because this bumper eventually is going to have to come off in this entire thing. Uh, before I put it all back together, everything's going to come off because there's a ton of crap down in here underneath the lip of the of the bumper. <laughs> but it's pretty, pretty good shape. Nothing's broken anyway. Now these uh, rubber things... I'm not exactly certain what these are all about. I don't think. Now they're held in with these little clips right here. But I don't see any of these held in that way, so I'm not certain. Maybe they just got lazy at the factory, huh? <laughs> these go in like that. Not exactly certain what they're for, but no problem. So anyway, the next step is to get the uh, license plate light down, get that bulb out, and get, you know, the whole nine yard. I want to get this entire thing out, but I got to get that wire off <coughs> the bulb off the uh, license plate light first. I just gave it a good washing, good scrub down with. I used this uh, Clorox bleach and cleaner. Boy, I'll tell you, that stuff works great for everything, I swear. Anyway, I gave it a good scrub down with a paintbrush and uh, let it sit out in the sun. I soaked it front and rear. Looks a whole lot better now, nice and clean. I'm going to leave it assembled in one piece for now. i got to find out whether or not I can get these gaskets. I hope so. I don't want to, I don't want to have to make any, but I will if I have to. <clears throat> but anyway, apparently the, the bulb on the rear has a little, uh, little rubber cup I'm going to have to peel back. i got a feeling that's not going to go well. I think what they did was they, they took heat shrink ran it over and shrunk it down around there. I don't think that's a rubber cup, which I can do. I'll just have to get some bigger heat shrink, that's all. By the way, this is not plastic, it is pop metal. I'm up them apples, huh? <laughs> By the way, all I did was take this pair of uh, pliers. This, these, these Johnny, you traded me some of these for some stuff that he, I had that he wanted. I'm just gonna put the clamp, I just, Work it back and forth like that as it you know, pulled it right on out. Well, guess what, old bean? I don't have a choice. I've got to take these bolts out. These things are so rusted. Look at this one. Half the nut is missing. Uh, they're just really, really rusted bad. So I'm not concerned about taking these out at all, having them break off possibly because they're so rusted because the bolt goes all the way through. I can buy new bolts and bolt them up. The other side, these they're all 9 16 believe it or not. Anyway, the other side is the big problem. These are bolts. Actual bolts that screw into something. I don't know if there's a nut on the other side. I don't know if there's a something molded into the bumper that if the bolt breaks off, I've got myself a real problem. <laughs> but I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight bolts and all the rest yeah eight bolts that go straight in and uh, I don't know what's on the other side these down here no problem and all of these all of these uh, I've got brand new to replace all those so other than a few small screws you know like this kind of junk here to hold some kind of a uh, 
some kind of, I'm gonna have to check with Nick and find out what that is. It looks like some kind of a cushioning where it goes up against the body. This, this is the uh, top, I guess, when it comes down. They gotta have something here. I don't know what that looks like. I'll have to ask Nick, maybe he can send me a picture. But anyway, uh, yeah, here's more of it right here. I don't know if it's a steady strip that goes all the way across or, but that's all, just the small stuff. Well, wish me luck. I'm debating which side to start on. Uh, I guess I ought to start on the most difficult one, see what happens. All right, take two on these. I think I better take my uh, burns and and heat these babies up. Maybe that'll help loosen them up. Uh, the other's no problem, but I have got to get these out in one piece. Got to heat them up. I'm going to use that uh, map gas, that uh, yellow one I got. Well, they all broke loose. I can't believe it. But, uh, you know, we're not out of the woods yet. Some of them, I tried to take this one out here with a wrench. And it comes so far, and then it would stop, and then it would go back in and come out. We're having a little problem. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the pneumatic wrench on it. I've soaked them really good with our PB blaster. And then we'll take our time. I think my best bet is to go with one of these two first and see what we actually have. Well, that's not too bad. They're a little boogered up, but apparently I, it looks like it's welded down in there. A nut. Uh, it's not the same as the other side, that's for sure. The other side uh, the other side of these, uh, the, uh, the other side of this nut here is a, those square-headed, those round cap bolts with the square underneath them. All right, let's just stay with it. We're halfway there. So far, no problems. <laughs> Four more to go. You can bet. Murphy's got to show up here. Well, only one more to go on this side. The rest is a piece of cake. Like I said, I'll let you watch this. Watch old man Murphy show up. How about that? They all came out. I don't believe it. <laughs> of course, I'm going to have to now make another trip to the hardware store. <laughs> and it's going to make the wifey happy after all that money I spent yesterday. <laughs> she is not She is not delighted. But, you know, that's the way it goes. She's not going to be delighted at all when I spend the money to get the lights in this garage. Ooh, she's going to be very upset. I don't care. <laughs> As they used to say in the army, old bean, this baby has now been stripped down to parade rest. All these bolts and everything will have to be changed out. Look at that mess. God, those things were rusted. Of course, nothing like what you guys have up there in Michigan, but to me, that's, that's unbelievable. Just another quick update. Apparently that guy that does the sandblasting is not interested in any of my business. He hasn't bothered to call back. Even with the coronavirus, he could have made a phone call, you know. But, so I decided to write him off and do it myself. If I've gone over the entire thing with a wire brush uh, in an electric drill. You know, the cone, cone wire brush knocked all the heavy rust off. Right now it's soaking in the oven cleaner. I'm going to let it set all night in oven cleaner. Now you can do that. And both sides. I've got done and tomorrow I'll scrub and wash it all down with soap and everything and then put some of that rust treatment on it. Well that turned out pretty good. Uh, we have a few rust spots here I'm putting this treatment on and I took the wire brush, the cone brush on that drill really really hit it hard and heavy but you know I'm not going to grind the rust off. I'm going to go ahead and uh, if I grind it off it would tear up the metal and stuff like that. I don't want that to happen so I'm just kind of spot doing it this time. I'm not going to cover the entire thing. And we'll see how that looks. Uh, I'm going to have to let this set 24 hours. Tomorrow, I'll put the primer. Uh, I have a primer and paint combination. And then we'll go ahead and put that on there, both front and back. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. What do we have here? It's a radio from a 1966 Thunderbird. Well, now we know, folks, what happened to the old radio. It looks like our good subscriber, Ron C., from down in Florida, has stealthed around, skulked around in the middle of the night, and, you know, just absconded with Perlene's radio. And He's got it now back in his house down in Florida. He says he's going to repair it. Well, good for him. I think that's fantastic. He's a very good repairman. He does an excellent job on the radios. He takes his time. He, works with, he also works with Brendan. And... Uh, 
he just started this uh, this radio stuff just a few years ago. You know, he had never done it before, and he's he's made tremendous progress. I trust him with that radio implicitly. He will do a great job. Uh, now the eight track tape player, mm, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> So that's the story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, for those of you who own Thunderbirds, or you're just inquisitive about how to repair a, a car radio from any classic car, it would, a lot of what he's going to do will apply to any classic car, probably. Subscribe to his channel. I'll put the link down below the video here in the, uh, in the description. I guess they call it the description section. It'll be Ron C's channel. Go to his channel, watch what he's doing, and subscribe to him. And because from, you know, his channel is now linked to mine via the radio. So go ahead and see what he has to offer. It'll be probably, uh, I don't know, he does a pretty good job within six, maybe six videos, seven. Depends on what he runs into. But I can tell you one thing. He's never worked on a car radio or an 8-track tape player. So this is going to be very interesting from my viewpoint also. Now this is the bumper that I took off. I went ahead and polished it all up with a Brillo pad. I bought those Brillo pads, by the way. They're not really Brillo pads. I went to the Dollar General, and they sell a whole box of them, soapy-type Brillo pads or SOS pads for a dollar. I said, give me a box of those babies. I'm not going to use them all anyway, but this was really rusty down in here. This was really, really rusty when I first got it. All the way around. I mean, you could rub your hand like that. It would be just covered with rust. I cleaned it all out, wire brushed it all out, uh, treated it with the uh, with that rust treatment once more, and then primed it a couple of times, and we're now good to go. We have I can go there, and there's nothing on my hands. It looks really nice down in here. Now the next thing we had to do was these things right here are just shot to pieces. They're rusty. They got holes in them. There's eight of those, and uh, you can see how messed up they are. And uh, they go over the top of these all the way across with this part down of course but uh, you can see they're no good they're just no good they go like this with this part down and then a bolt goes through like that like that and it holds the the part that holds all the the, the light bulbs and all that stuff so i had to do something and i kind con again i contacted uh, our good buddy nick out there in uh vintage uh, thunderbird repair and he said you know uh you can get them on, uh, at the bird nest birdnest.com and uh, this is these come with the bolts I said wow this is unbelievable I couldn't believe it so each one of these is $3.95 a piece they come with the bolt that's a very good price on these very reasonable I thought so I'll be putting these in there like that on each one of these all the way across there's eight of them required but I couldn't use these anymore these were just these were some of them were so bad I mean they were just Part of them were completely gone, as you can see right there. It's completely rusted away. So, you know, why mess with that stuff? You know, I've gone to this extent here, a couple extra dollars here and there to get nice new equipment to put on there. That comes with the bolts. This is what I really like. They come in like this in a bag. And uh, Bird Nest out there in uh, Oregon did did a good job. You know, I don't think I've ever bought anything from Bird Nest. I might have, but since then I bought quite a bit because. Max Thunderbird really gave me the runaround on my rotors, and I didn't like that. And so I've spent quite a bit of money with other suppliers. You know, they kept, Max kept telling me, oh, yeah, the rotors will be in in a day or two. You, we'll get them in the mail. And they never did. A couple weeks went by, never heard a thing. We contacted them. Oh, no, uh, it's still not in. We don't know when we're going to get them. But why didn't you tell me this in the beginning? I'm sitting out here waiting weeks on end, and you didn't even bother telling me you didn't have them and you wouldn't get them and all that crap. That bugged me. I didn't like that. You know, treat your customers better than that. Now, these things go in, as I said, with the uh, pointed end down, facing down into the, the trough here. And the way we're going to do this is go ahead and just, I think I'll put this one in from this side. It can go in from either side. It doesn't really matter. Just kind of stick them in there best you can. Line them up with the hole if you ever have to do this. Use the other side of my ball peen hammer. There we go. Just tap them in. They'll go. They'll drop down in when they hit the hole. There they go. Nothing to it. <laughs> Blow out the dust. Okay. And then once we get the uh, the uh, you know the uh, piece that holds all the light bulbs, and everything turned upside down and on that. This is how we bolt it in. 
So let's go ahead and finish it. Now this uh, goes on next upside down. There's a certain way it goes. This uh, thing right here that's open is for the uh, the uh, license plate light assembly. We'll go into here. You know, it goes in from the other side, and then the wire comes through a, a hole here somewhere. Yeah, there it is, right there. It is a little uh, little Duma Flutchy right there. And it comes through and it plugs into the wiring harness. And uh, this thing was really rusty. Boy, was it rusty! It took me a couple days of de-rusting and and uh, rust treatment and uh, painting. I put like three coats of primer and paint on this thing. And uh, it is looking a whole lot better. But anyway, I've got all the bolts down in there. Now, some of these holes are not going to exactly uh, line up. Don't worry about it because those clips I put in, they do move around, okay? They're designed that way so they can move around till you get them all in. And they will go in. So all I have to do now is put this babies down there. Yeah, because, you know, make sure the other side is pretty well lined up. You want to make, do that the best you can. Over here, we're going to be using square uh, bolts with uh, their, uh, I guess they call them carriage bolts. I don't know what they're called. I can't remember that stuff. I think they're called carriage bolts or stove bolts, and they have the square underneath the head. Makes no difference what they are. Don't care. I got them. Brand new ones with lock washers and everything. We're going to go ahead and make sure all this stuff is, is pretty well lined up. Uh, I might even, I'll tell you what, before I tighten down these, I might go ahead and run a couple of bolts through from the other side so everything stays in place while I'm tightening them down. And that's what they look like right here. We got uh, eight of those. One, two, three, four, and then four over here also. And these little things here, you can buy those at <clears throat> the bird's nest also, or bird nest. And they're just a small pack. They come in a pack of eight. I think they're designed to, there's a, a chrome on the bumper comes down uh, in front of this black thing. And these bolts are go through and these are designed I think I, I'm not really 100% certain but they're designed to protect the chrome where the bolt goes through and that's it for that <clears throat> boy I'm getting real hoarse here today for some reason so uh, let's see what else we can do tomorrow if everything goes right I plan to put I plan to put these uh, pigtails on which will be these these things right here the green is not used these are just for uh, these are just for taillights and uh, this thing here, I'll be using the center disc out of it. And uh, actually, I'm using the center part of this, too. This goes up. This is what I need to remove from the, uh, from the socket right here. One, two, three. And then uh, snip them off and splice them onto the existing wires here. And then uh, that's going to just about take care of that, except for putting in the wire loom, you know. I uh, went ahead and cleaned every one of these holes out to make sure we had a good ground. I took my uh, multimeter and you know, touched it right there. Got a good ground, then I, then I ran the other lead around in a circle on every single one of them and I had a good solid continuity. No missing continuity anywhere in the circle after I sanded it out. So that's how that went down and then the wires, the wires run along here. And the clip that held them all on there is all rotted, you know, rotted and rusted away. So I'm going to go ahead and use these to uh, hold the wires when I put the uh, the looms in. Well, I didn't get as much done today as I wanted to get done. I wanted to get everything done, but I'm having to let it dry now. I had to put some uh, liquid tape here and some more liquid tape over here. There was some exposed wires. They did a really bad job there when they put this thing together initially. But I did get the, the new, the sockets repaired in this one, this one, this one, and this one. <clears throat> so our, our two backup lights are good to go, which is this one and this one. All the rest are just taillights. <clears throat> so we're good to go on that. And uh, tomorrow I hope to press all those other uh, wires in, you know, the red, white, and blue stuff. And this is why none of these things were working. It's incredible when you think about it. If I can get a nice clear zoom here. Let me see here. Look how, look how mangled those things are. This one here too. That's not too bad, but you can't pull them in. They won't, they won't pull in. This one here is stuck out. Won't even pull. 
and just really, really get them over here where we can see them in the light. This is what the uh, contacts look like, <laughs> the originals. Can you believe that? What a mess. And here's another one. They just won't pull in. They stuck out. And this one here, it's just a total wreck. Well, here's the bumper so far. I got all the bolts and nuts and everything put in it and these rubber things that feel, I don't know what they do. They do nothing, actually. So all I have to do now is uh, take it over and set it in. Uh, putting this thing in, you've got to line up your bolts. And uh, there's four of them. There's uh, one, two, three, four, and four over on that side. Well, so far, so good. The only problem was... <laughs> This is my own stupid fault. I bought the wrong size bolts for here. I'm supposed to have two here and two here. The problem was I bought them too small. Uh, on, and lucky me, I still had two of them that were serviceable enough to go in there and hold this bumper on until I can get down there Monday and pick up what I need. And I'll get new star washers, new bolts. But these here are holding it in in the meantime. Unfortunately, I didn't discover that until uh, the hardware store closed at noon, so <laughs> nothing I can do about it. But I've got this thing in nice and solid now. And I'll pick up those bolts Monday. Right now, but I think that looks pretty nice, doesn't it? I like that. that it's got a nice looking rear end now. No more rust and crap. It's going to look nice when I get all those brand new taillight lenses in there and all that shined up aluminum best I could. Now let's see what we can do with this right now. Man, alive! That was harder to put in than the bumper was. I couldn't believe it. All those wires back there were getting in the way. It was just a mess. And I've only got it in, you know, a couple of screws holding it because i got to take it back out to put those larger bolts in on Monday. But she's in there and everything's plugged up and I need a cup of coffee. Check out what's left of the license plate light. The frame is just... I could probably clean that up, but I'm going to try to buy a whole new setup. I think I can get them on either Max or one of the other vendor sites. Really shot. All right, last but not least, in the shop manual on page 17-14, you'll see the rear of the car and uh, the bumper assemblies and everything, the brackets and whatnot. And here you see the, uh, the rubber sheet hanging down right here. There's one on each side. And it slips down into the bottom and hangs straight down, straight down. And uh, over here, they give an even better uh, view of it. Here are the three screws that hold it. Now, it comes across, and it kind of goes down. It kind of bends around the side here. It's, it doesn't lay there flat all the way across. It comes across with these. these are, when you order these things from Bird Nest, they'll have the holes already punched in them. Uh, be sure to use flat washers. Don't just try to run a screw through there because it'll just go right down through the rubber. The rubber is tough, but it's also very pliable, and uh, the screw will just go right through it, and it'll wind up falling off after a while. Put a flat washer underneath the heads of those screws. It doesn't have to be large, but it has to be large enough to keep the, you know, the heads from slipping down through. And it'll come across. There'll be holes here, here, and one down here on the side. It'll come across and down, enabling this thing to hang straight down, okay? So it's, it's kind of uh, over and down this way, okay? It kind of covers the corner down to here. They wanted to have good water coverage, I guess, and then, of course, the other one goes on the other side. So, And they're not very expensive. I think I only paid, like, I don't know, just a few bucks. They come in, they come in a pair. Really, really, uh, I, I, I think it's very well worth it. The newer ones are much better than those old, those old type that look like tire walls of a tire. <laughs> that, that's what they look like. You saw in the video where I was kind of messing with what was left of them, what fragments were there. Okay, that's it. We're going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I hope uh, some of you uh, learned something new even. If you didn't, well, I'm sorry. You know, I do my best. I, I have to assume that folks don't know what I'm showing. Or if they do know, it gives them a good refresher. Okay? So next time we'll be back to the sequential taillight assembly again. I've got to do something with that. And there's no telling what else we'll do. I, I want to get it totally clean and squared away to where I can start taking this little tool right here. 
I want to get I want to take this baby. I've got the face masks to wear and everything. I want to get this angle grinder with this big old heavy brush on there. I want to start knocking the rust off the inside of that car so I can get that floor welded in now you know the weather's getting colder and colder i may or may not get to the floor i don't know we shall see i, I do want i mean I, I can probably get to it with this but in order to weld the uh floor in i i want the car out of the garage i don't want to be doing it in the garage i'm not you know i'm just not a skilled welder i don't want to set something on fire <clears throat> we'll see what happens i've only welded once in my whole life so that's going to be a lot of fun you guys watching me, but so if I set old Perlene on fire, I want her to burn up outside the garage, not in. Until next time, this is John.